orthogonal projections onto subspaces via Gram-Schmidt. First, let's look at the geometry of an inner product in a real space. So two vectors give you three points, which spans a plane. So I can take this vector figure and overlay a triangle on it, going from point to point. Looking at that triangle, I know the lengths of the sides. It's the length of B, length of A minus B, length of A. Using the law of cosines, this is a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem. You can treat any side as the hypotenuse you just pay a 2ab cosine theta penalty. Definition of the norm, inner product with itself. Inner product is linear in each component and distribute. We're in a real space, so AB and BA in an inner product are the same, so I can collect those two terms together. The other two terms cancel with the other side. Now with this, I can divide by length A. Put it inside the inner product. So I have the inner product of B against the A direction. Or I could divide by B, get a similar thing. Inner product of A against the B direction. Going back to my vector figures. So I have a vector, got another vector B, and now we'll look at orthogonal projections. Project A onto B. That's some scale of the B vector. Draw a triangle for the lengths. Extract that triangle. Length of the hypotenuse is A, and so the other side is A cosine theta, which is the inner product of A with the B direction. B is a scalar, and it's positive, so I just pull it out. And there I've got my scalar. Apply that to B. And it's the projection. So there's our projection operation. Projecting A onto B. I can do the exact same thing. Projecting B onto A. The projection is some scale of A. but getting a triangle from the lengths of the vectors. Hypotenuse has length B. So that side length B cosine theta, which I can replace with the inner product. Alpha is a positive constant, so it just pulls out. Divide by length A, and there's my scalar. So alpha A is the projection of B onto A. Now let's do a projection onto a one-dimensional space. 
which is basically the case of what happens in the angles not acute so the scalar is not positive and then just do minus b and do the exact same construction we just did with the angle pi minus theta you get the projection of a onto minus b a against the minus b direction scaling the minus b direction vector but the negatives cancel so that's just the projection of on to B. So if I take the space spanned by the vector B, this vector is well defined. This is only for a one dimensional subspace because Octo Rubato is plus or minus. Two dimensions is much harder, but once we have the 1 to 2, this exact argument will work for 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and then induction gives me the rest. So I've got a two-dimensional subspace, and I want to project another vector onto it. So there's its projection. I want the projection to be orthogonal, giving the vectors the labels u and w. C is their sum w's then c minus u and I want u and w to have inner product zero replacing w by c minus u and using linearity now the subspace is spanned so a and b make a grid on the space so any other vector a linear combination of the a and b vectors. So this vector is u1a plus u2b. Let's use that fact with orthogonality and compute. Replace Use linearity to expand. Here I'm using linearity in each component twice. Collect together the U1 terms. Collect together the U2 terms. and the product terms. I want that sum to be zero. So if the inner product of A and B is zero, so if I have an orthogonal basis, and U2 is the projection operator scalar, and U1 is the projection operator scalar, then the sum is zero, and U and W are orthogonal u1a projection of c onto a u2b projection of c onto b there's our gram schmidt orthogonalization we start with an orthogonal basis and we keep on building so that our subspace always has an orthogonal basis what we've said is that u1 is now the orthogonal projection of c onto u. That's the scalar for the orthogonal projection. u2 is the same thing for b. And a and b are orthogonal. This is now a well-defined mapping. So it takes c into U through the projection operator. Let me explicitly write down what this operator is. A and B are being made unit vectors, so we'll call them F1, F2, and their inner product will be zero. So it's an orthonormal basis. 
then this operator is the inner product against F1, scaling F1, inner product against F2, scaling F2. Everything there is fixed except for C. So the argument for the operator, if I put any linear combination in there, that puts that linear combination into the inner product, which is linear in the first component, and I get a linear combination of operator terms.